Join me, Pure Storage, and DJ Data this week on Data Exposed to learn all about Snapshot Backup Catalog with SQL Server 2025 and Pure Storage. This week on Data Exposed. Hi, I'm Anna Hoffman, and welcome to this episode of Data Exposed. Today, we have some exciting topics, and we have a special partner joining us. Um, today, I have Anthony from Pure Storage and Dehana J, aka DJ Data. Um, before we get into it, I'd love if we could do some quick intros. So, Anthony, can you tell us a little bit about what you do? Uh, sure. Hey, everyone. I'm Anthony Nocentino. I'm a senior principal field solution architect at Pure Storage. I focus on uh, relational database systems, specifically SQL Server. Uh, and I'm also a uh, Microsoft MVP and have been for the last nine years. Awesome. And Dahana Jay, can you, or DJ Data, I should say, <laughs> can you give us a re intro? Yeah. Thank you, Anna. Excited to be back on uh, Data Exposed. I'm Dhananjay Mahajan, uh, principal product manager on, on SQL Server team working with uh, partners on the database engine like Pure Storage uh, and specifically focused on the SQL Server 2025 launch. So happy to be back here as DJ Data. Awesome. And we're happy to have you back here as DJ Data, for sure. Um, so before we get into like some real specifics on what's going on uh, and how Pure can make it better, uh, I wanted to talk about SQL Server. Uh, at the time of recording, we're at RC0. Um, DJ Data, can you share a little bit about SQL Server 2025 and why folks or GBAs should care? Yeah, the exciting thing that has happened recently is we released the RC0 candidate. So Anna, many of our customers have already downloaded uh, the SQL Server RC0 candidate, uh, pretty much feature rich for building uh, AI applications, provides built-in extensible AI capabilities, enhancing a developer productivity, seamless integration with Azure, Fabric, using the same T-SQL. And, and we have built an ability, as, as you may all know, to discover better insights and boost search intelligence uh, by natively supporting vector embeddings in SQL Server database engine uh, with advanced semantic search, disk in and uh, running generative AI models uh, which you can uh, use either Azure CI models or now with SQL Server 2025, you can build in your, uh, bring in your own uh, AI models and process and manage data flows with change event streaming. And one exciting thing is the REST API uh, integration that we have built. And that's where, you know, what Anthony is going to deep dive into is how we have worked with Anthony and his team at Pure Storage right from the beginning of when we started working on SQL Server 2025 to enhance the capabilities to help uh, DBAs. Um, awesome. To excite, cool. yeah. I'd love to hear it. And you know, we're a big fan of SQL Server 2025 on the show. Obviously, we did a series about it several months ago. If you want to catch that as well. Um, but DJ Data, I'd love to understand more. Like, how do we partner with Pure Storage, especially when it comes to like a new release? Yeah, one of the great things, Anna, about Pure Storage is that they have a enterprise data cloud, which spans on-premises as well as in Azure Cloud, which is what we have at SQL Server, a unique enterprise-grade database, which can span with the security, scalability, and performance. And we have been working with uh, Anthony and his team on all these areas to provide our customers the data platform that works best for SQL Server, fine-tuned it, done performance tuning. But today, we'll also learn from Anthony on how he has helped integrate some of their tool set to automate common actions and reduce the overall cost for DBAs. Nice, awesome. I feel like that's a great segue, Anthony, to ask you. Like, I know we have this new Invoke SP external REST endpoint capability in SQL Server 2025. Um, how does, what types of opportunities or potentials does that open up for uh, pure storage? And how does that relate to Flash Array, which I'm learning more about? Cool. Uh, thanks, Anna. So I guess a little quick story. Going back to when uh, Azure SQL DB and SQL MI a couple of years ago, the SP external REST endpoint became a feature there. And I immediately wanted to go get that and do that in our on-prem stuff that we have and also in our Azure cloud. And I couldn't. And then 25 came out and that feature was built in. So I was super excited working with DJ in the early access program. It was the first demo that I built is I grabbed the, the bits, uh, installed them in our data center, and I'm able to orchestrate storage activities directly from the database engine now with any external tools. 
And so the very, very first thing that I did is I took a snapshot backup, which was a signature feature in SQL Server 2022. And I was able to execute that snapshot backup with no external tools. So no PowerShell, no Python, nothing else, just T-SQL and a flash array that speaks REST. And it was able to get the outcome of taking an application consistent snapshot backup in our data center uh, almost instantaneously with you see how fast this code runs. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. Can you can you give us kind of a, a real example of how someone might query this in a catalog or maybe do some sort of picture or point in time restore using sure. it? Yeah. So earlier this year, inside of Flash Array, we released a new tagging mechanism on what's called a protection group. Uh, and inside of a Flash Array, we have databases that live inside of volumes and collectively can be snapshot as a protection group, which gets you the consistency that you need out of the storage platform. Now that we've added tags to that snapshot, I can come back later and ask the Flash Array for a snapshot of a database, not a snapshot of a volume, which means as a DBA, I speak databases and tables, not volumes and fiber channels. And so I can interact with these devices in a language that I'm used to without having that gap of volumes in an array versus databases that I actually want to recover. Oh, this is amazing. So this is even so much more than just being able to use T-SQL to do your backup. Like now you can get some real benefits from a user perspective uh, with right. your workloads. Awesome. Yeah, I think some people like, you know, when you build enterprise backup systems and you think of you have to protect the catalog. Well, there is no catalog because the, the actual data in a snapshot itself holds the metadata about the recovery or the thing inside the snapshot. So I don't no longer have to protect this backup catalog that exists. And then when I take these snapshots and I replicate them to other storage arrays on-prem or even into Azure, that goes that information goes with that replication. So I have that context wherever this data lives. Oh, that's amazing. Can we see it? Sure. Let's get into it. Awesome. So right here, I have a SQL Server 2025 RC0 up and running. I have a couple of links here in this code, which is available on my GitHub, which will also be in the show's notes. Uh, using the external REST endpoint feature, we go ahead and I'm going to, there's a lot of syntax here. I'm going to focus on the flow and that's not so much the actual code, but I do have to authenticate into the array and I'll jump down later and I'll show you where I am freezing the database for Red.io, which is a feature that hopefully some of us are working with now. And this is a large four terabyte database. And once I freeze that for Red.io, I can go in into the array and actually take the snapshot. So here's the actual payload or the, the rest call I'm going to pass or the data that I'm going to pass into the rest call which is gonna have all the metadata information about the snapshot that I take right here on line 122. So when I run this code, it takes about three or four seconds to run, but it does all of that work, freezes the database for writes, does the snapshot, does the tagging, and also forces it for replication immediately at the time of the snapshot. So this data is quite literally off this array onto another array by the time this code finishes running. And if I go to the terminal here, excuse me, if I go to the messages here, we can see the information associated with all of these operations, and there is the actual database name, the SQL Server instance that I'm working with, when the snapshot was taken, and also that backup metadata file that's emitted from the snapshot backup, that gets thrown into my, my geo-replicated S3 cloud, so that that's also protected as well in this integration. And then later, I can come along on a completely separate instance of SQL Server on another flash array, I can query that flash array for this information. So that's gonna run this script here, which is gonna ask, this other flash array in my data center, which ends in 27, well, it already has the snapshot from our flash array that ends in 33 for the database that we just took the snapshot with. And I didn't ask for a volume. I just said, hey, where's the latest snapshot for this database? And it gives me that information. And now I can go ahead and start the recovery process. That's awesome. It's great to see that, Anthony. And I'd love to understand a little bit more, like I think you explain how this helps, especially if you're in kind of this multi-cloud or hybrid type of environment, but do you have any best practices or tips and tricks for folks who are trying to just get started with SQL Server 2025 and Flash Array? Uh, sure, honestly, go out to our GitHub repository and just grab the code and get started working. I think once you kind of see the possibilities about how these interactions or integrations come together, you'll be able to apply them to your challenges and with your data in your data center. Amazing. And any other shout outs for pure storage plus SQL Server 2025 while we have you? Oh, sure, sure. Obviously, I, I, we led with this kind of the REST story, which is super exciting to be able to integrate both uh, database engines directly into your storage infrastructure. But spent a bunch of time working with DJ and the team and, um, and 
just and Davide around AI, right? And learning like things like vector indexes and vector support and all the performance that comes along with that. And so it's been a fantastic opportunity to work with the team to discover things like the data reduction that comes in our arrays or the ability to optimally place data on object and block in our platform. So imagine, you know, you have terabytes of embeddings in these new databases. Well, maybe I don't need the embeddings from 1998 on my tier one storage. I could put those on object with external table signature feature from nice. SQL Server 2022, right? So those are the kind of things that we worked together uh, with DJ and the team uh, during the early access program and talked a bunch about over the summer at our Accelerate conference, uh, where we announced a bunch of integrations for SQL Server 2025 then as well. Awesome. That's amazing. Well, Anthony and DJ Jada, uh, thanks so much for going on Data Expose. I personally learned a lot. I have some exciting new things to go try. Uh, for our viewers, if you like this episode, go ahead and give it a like, leave us a comment, and let us know how you plan to use these capabilities together. We'll put some links in the description for you to go learn more and follow along as we prepare for general availability of SQL Server 2025. Uh, we hope to see you next time on Data Exposed. <laughs>